Hello grade 11 biology class. Welcome back. Lesson 10, last one of the circulatory system. I feel like we've made some serious progress here. Uh, this one, as you can see, is titled Blood Vessels. It's lesson 10 after this. Hand in your booklets and complete the test. Yay, onto the respiratory system. So, uh, here we go. There are three types of blood vessels. And as you can see, these are gonna be key points one, two, and three. They are not in a very good order here or in the key points, but you get the idea. These are the three types, arteries, capillaries, and veins. Um, blood vessels in general are an elastic tubular channel that circulates blood through tissues and organs and around your whole body, essentially. Uh, a lot of people believe that arteries have oxygenated blood while veins have deoxygenated blood. And while that's true, like 99% of the time, that is actually not their definition. Uh, we're then also going to get into what capillaries are and how they help us um, work through our everyday lives. So arteries first. Uh, the thing that distinguishes what an artery is is when it carries that they carry blood away from the heart. That's why the pulmonary artery has deoxygenated blood in it. It is carrying blood away from the heart to the lungs, while the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. So that's the one percent of time where it's not correct. So arteries, by definition, carry blood away from the heart. They are very thick. They are smooth muscle, which means that they are all connected. Uh, the muscle are very long and the walls are elastic. And the reason that the walls of arteries are elastic is because they need to be able to expand uh, during diastolic pressure and, and go back down to a regular channel during uh, systolic pressure. So they need to be able to move out and in. And that's why you can feel your pulse. That's your arteries bulging. You can feel it in your neck, in your wrists, sometimes in your feet. That's how far away the arteries in your body need to be able to stretch out. Now, the highest pressure again is in your aorta, so it needs to be the stretchiest as it is the highest pressure overall. Um, arteries transport blood away from the heart. It has nothing to do with blood that has oxygen compared to without oxygen. And again, the aorta is the largest artery. It connects the left ventricle of the heart to the rest of the body. It is the first uh, artery to catch blood as it's pumped out of the heart. So that is naturally the highest pressure. It needs to be the strongest and stretchiest. So an artery has three layers. It has an outer layer so that it's connected to everything around it. It has a really thick middle layer of muscle fibers and they're very elastic so that they can stretch, that's why. And then they have a very smooth innermost layer of epithelial cells, kind of like skin cells. They're very flat and smooth. Uh, they're a thin sheet of tightly packed cells, kind of like skin that allow blood to move past it freely so that there's no friction and uh, nothing gets caught. So an outer layer, a muscle layer, and an inner layer that's very smooth. Um, arteries have to be strong to withstand pressure from the beating heart. Elastic tissue and strong muscles allow them to expand and, con and contract or constrict uh, depending on the situation. The inner layer is very smooth so that the blood can flow easily with no obstacles in its path. If there are any questions about any of this, please let me know. But arteries essentially are stretchy and smooth on the inside because there is high pressure and they need to be able to expand during that pressure. Capillaries are next, so um, capillaries uh, are essentially where uh, gas exchange takes place or where uh, the oxygen flows into the tissues and CO2 is collected. Uh, they connect arteries to veins. They are in the middle. They are the smallest blood vessels. They're only about one cell thick, uh, and their job is to distribute nutrients like oxygen and anything that we eat, like vitamins and minerals, proteins throughout the body. Capillaries also remove cellular waste like carbon dioxide uh, by diffusion from the blood and distribute waste um, into the blood so that it can be uh, removed to your kidneys, your liver, your spleen, or in the case of CO2, out your lungs and your respiratory system. So essentially the arteries deliver them the, the blood somewhere and then the capillaries do like all the intricate weaving of where the blood needs to go. They reach all those far out places. Uh, so that nutrients can be delivered everywhere. 
Um, so veins carry blood back to the heart. They are generally thinner because they don't have as much um, pressure underneath them. So veins carry blood back to the heart. They're under low pressure, much, much lower than that of arteries. They do not need to be stretchy. Um, and many veins actually contain one-way valves. And what this does is this prevents the backflow of blood. So if you've ever noticed that maybe you've worked really long day and you've been on your feet for 10 hours and your legs are kind of swollen and they're sore uh, and then you kind of sit down and you put them up and it just feels so much better like, like like just things are moving in your legs again that's because gravity has pulled blood down into your legs and there's not enough pressure from your heart to push the blood back up into uh, to get recirculated and reoxygenated um, your leg muscles do squeeze to push blood back up but that is definitely not enough when you've been uh, on your feet all day. That's why lots of people um, use uh, pressure socks so that like they can help squeeze the muscles and the blood back to um, up the legs so that they don't get all get trapped in your calves and in your ankles and get swollen. They kind of look like this. So I, I know this looks like a calf and that's kind of how I think of it, but these are how veins are shaped. So the blood is moving up towards the heart and as it moves a little bit, the valve will then close so that the blood can't go back down. Those two flaps essentially move to the inside and they catch all the blood as it goes back down. So uh, that is one way that your body is able to try to push the blood up. It doesn't allow it to fall back very far. Veins act as low resistance channels for the flow of blood back uh, from the tissues back to the heart. Most veins, particularly in the arms and the legs, have one-way valves, so they go through and then they close as, as if it tries to go backwards. Uh, that prevents backflow of blood into the capillaries. Um, sometimes, like it just, it all gets clogged up. Uh, it's all too heavy, uh, and your legs get swollen. You just need to relax and put your feet up, uh, and maybe the blood will flow back into your heart. You can also massage your legs uh, to get the blood moving again. Um, but sometimes the the muscles in your legs and in your arms just isn't enough to get the blood back to your heart and recirculating. It's not really dangerous. Uh, it's just definitely not ideal. So veins have the same three layers as arteries, but the inner layer, the middle layer, is much less elastic. Uh, it is very thin and contains less tissue than arteries. So. The walls of veins are not as strong because the walls of, as the walls of arteries because they are farther away from the heart, meaning they're subject to less pressure from the heart. And if they were stretchy, that would actually hurt them in bringing blood back to the heart as they already have trouble. So here we can compare and I'll show you, there's a YouTube video here and I'll show you some real pictures under a microscope of the heart, but you can see thick artery walls, very smooth for both of them. And this one has thin vein walls with the valve. So if I was to show you a picture here, you should be able to show me which one is the artery and which one is the vein and explain why that is. So here we can see some cross sections. Essentially, there's tissue that's been cut so that you can see the arteries and the veins running through. This one, <clears throat> pardon me, up here is an artery and we can tell because it is a more circular shape showing that there is lots of pressure and it has a very thick wall. You can see it is very thick compared to this one, which is a vein. This vein is partially collapsed because there's not much pressure in it and the wall is very, very thin. This bottom picture, you can see the huge difference in artery walls compared to vein walls here as well as the rounded shape compared to the very irregular shape as some of it is compressed. Here we go again, we have a very thick artery wall. Uh, this one has a very, not a very circular shape, but you can see it's a much larger open shape than this vein, which is kind of like a moon. It has a very thin wall. And we also have some different ducts here that move different fluids um, throughout your body. So arteries are the big ones with the big walls and veins are the smaller, irregularly shaped ones with the small walls. And we have one more example. Yes, we have a big, thick um, artery wall here. It's nice and circular compared to this small, irregularly shaped vein right here. Um, you guys can guess on this one if you want. You can pause it, it's a real secret. This one's an artery, see the thick wall and the circular shape. 
Um, what I want you to do is I want you to research the names of the main arteries and veins that go to and from these different organs that are listed here. Which ones go to your head? I guess your head's not really an organ, but you know what I mean. Which arteries and veins go to your head? Which arteries and veins go to your upper and lower arms, upper and lower legs? Which ones go to your kidneys? Which ones go to your liver? What are the names of these? And I will uh, expect you to be able to, to know what they are uh, and be able to point to them on a diagram and be able to name them. Um, I believe after this, yes, is the final slide. So when you're done all that, if you have any questions, confirm with me that you're all done. And I'll give you the test, you can hand in your booklet, and then you'll be on your way to the respiratory system. Again, if you guys have any questions at all, I, I'm here, you uh, see me every other day. So please, please ask, and I wish you luck as we continue on. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys soon.